Hi folks, welcome back to part 3 of the Slave 1 build um, So as promised at the end of the last video I was going to show you exactly what the skirt of the ship was going to look like Once I peeled back all the liquid mask And revealed all the different layers uh, and paint chipping So as promised, here it is there we go. Uh, very pleased with how that's turned out. The, uh, the reds went down lovely on top of the pink. Um, not too much pink showing through, which is definitely key. Uh, it's it's only really subtle. It's only when you actually sit and look at the photographs that you realise the pink is in there. Uh, as, a, as a sort of layer below and in the red. So, there we go. Right, so the next part we're going to do is we're going to move on and start masking off other parts of the... Uh, the skirt and stuff like that, we'll start getting the stripes done I think uh, and then we'll look at maybe even getting the the wells of the engine, uh, sorry the wings done alright right so we've got the front part of the nose all masked off and I'm going to start laying the first colour down um, there was a wee bit of masking fluid required just at the front as well and you'll also <coughs> excuse me you also notice for the reference work for the reference uh, images, sorry. If you can see that there, it's better. I don't know if that lightened a wee bit. It's a bit better. So, you can see that this panel comes down here and then kicks out a wee bit there. So, that's that there. We've managed to include that in it. Uh, there are some differences from this to this, as you'll probably pick up as well. But I'm going to have to just try to do my best to uh, represent that. Um, it's not going to be faithfully accurate but it's going to be a representation like well, I suppose the rest of the model so what the first colour I'm going to lay down is this colour here 1975 GN Green and but then over the top of that I plan on misting another colour and that colour will be uh, a very very popular colour in Star Wars uh, for weather and various other things is a uh, 1975 SP Lark Dark Grey uh, and that will be a mist over the top of that this is a, a, a quite a grey green colour if that makes any sense quite a military looking colour uh, but it will still be too green for this part of the ship and so there will be a slight misting going over the top of that uh, and then these darker parts at the front. I think I'm probably going to use grimy black. I think engine black is just too black, if that makes any sense. It's just too deep a black colour. Uh, but what I probably will use is grimy black because it's got a slight greyish feel to it. More than it is black, if that makes any sense. And in the right light, you can see a nice greeny tinge off it as well. So I think it'll just be... It'll just work in perfect with the rest of the, the model. Anyway, I'm going to dry this off and... Yeah, with the hair dryer and we'll see how it comes out at the end and we'll talk about the mist in next right we've got the GN grey green down uh, I had to put another layer on it just to darken it down a bit and uh, even it up uh, dried off with the hair dryer and I've mixed up some of this work dark grey into the hairbrush and uh, all we're just going to do just from a distance was just start just lightly misting that there. Now you're probably not seeing a great deal of change on the camera, but it is definitely darkening down. I'm gonna be better to a bit of light on it there. It's a bit better. Yep, there we go. That's more what we're looking for. Remember what I said at the start? Layers. It's all about layers. That's the key to this whole paint job. Layers. So, I don't want to go any more than that. That's enough. Actually, I've just come back. I'm just thinking, maybe I should actually just do this unmasking on camera. Just so you can actually get a feel for... How it's turned out. Don't my luck of an absolute disaster. 
and it'll look absolutely shoddy. But let's hope it doesn't. Just want to gently unmask that. Oh, there's a wee bit needing touched up just at the, the top there. There's some of the some of the paint is also coming off, but that's actually part of the bits that I've not been able to get. Uh, that was the masking fluid on a wee, wee bits here and there, so actually that's okay, I don't mind that. Uh, as you can see, it does normally, doesn't normally lift the paint, this tape, as I'd said earlier. It's pretty good, let me just show you here a bit. So you see here, this is not, that's just bits that were on the bench. Uh, from where I had the tape stuck down and cut it, but that's, uh, that's lifting off lovely there. It's just obviously the, the stuff that's still had the masking fluid on it around the skirt. Take that to the side. There's some more there. So, there we go. That looks ideal. There's a couple of wee bits just at the front here that I can neaten up uh, as we're going. And what we'll do is we'll just peel back that that masking fluid there as well. Very stiff brush that's good for that. One of these hog hair brushes is quite stiff. It's no useful for much in paint models, but it does have they do have their uses here and there. They're just cheap, so I don't mind them getting scuffed like this. And yep, there we go, that's taking that off nicely. Not too much chipping, just enough to the look. There we go. Yep, it's coming along. Uh, one thing I probably didn't see actually just a minute ago is uh, on the final the final weathering pass, uh, these colours will get knocked back a wee bit. Uh, they will lighten up. They won't be quite as intense. Uh, and you'll see what I mean as we get to that bit of the video. Okay, moving on. Right, before we progress with this video, I just want to point something out. You might notice that the background has changed slightly in here. Um, that's because I've been doing a wee bit of upgrading work um, for the last week or so in the garage um, and in my, my sort of work area. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in, a, in another video. Um, I'll let you see what I've, what I've done. Anyway, so we've got the, the dark stripe down the front done. We've got it down the back. Um what we're going to look at now is inside the wing wells, a section in here. Now, this fitment here um, on the artwork is quite dark on one side, but it seems to be a bit lighter than the other. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this bit yet, but what I'll show you the other side is what we're going to try and replicate on here. So if you just turn it around. Just that light, and so what you'll see here is this area, the gubbins in here, has been painted a green, a grey green color. Um, now that's not the final color. I'm going to use the do, 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 what color is it again? Yes, it's the lark dark grey, and we'll use that almost like a wash sprayed in there and that'll start to mucky and darken that area up. Uh, the paint will sort of settle into some of the recessed areas um, but you'll still have that grey colour shining through. Almost a bit like this colour on here. Pardon me. Um, that, and that basically is the, the grey green and then what I've done was I then misted some dark lark over, pardon me, over the top of that and then that there is that section, I believe I used weathered black, actually, for that darker stripe. And you can see, just, I know it's out of focus, but you can see this area here, how that's lighter and that bit's darker. Um, that colour will change again um, by the time we apply the mist coats on there, but that's, that's another part of the video. Uh, so, plan is to get... The other side, basically looking like this. This fitment here, I've actually went over the top of that with some mud 
um, 1975 mud is the colour. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's a very yellowy, sandy brown colour. It just seems to go with that mustardy armour yellow as well. Just adds to a bit more depth to that. Uh, and again, that will also get the treatment of uh, the, the, the dark lark wash. So I'll go ahead and start masking up and we'll just get this this area in here painted up to match the same as the other side. Right, so we've got the grey green into the wing well. I've decided that this part here I'm going to leave as it is. Um I like the overspray effect over the top of the, the armor yellow. Um we've now got the shoulder top part of the shoulders masked off, including this marking here that is left grey and the same on this side there is also a grey stripe that runs in here um, what we're going to now do is just get the rest of these parts masked off so that we don't get over spray on the wings and stuff um, the colours that we're going to be putting down will be or the layers of how it's going to work out will be some liquid mask along some of the edges here there's a couple other bits where there's chips in the paint um, I'm then going to apply Coach Green as a sort of base colour. On top of that, I will then apply a wee bit more uh, chipping fluid, or sorry, masking fluid, to create that chipping effect, particularly on the, the upper parts of the shoulders. We'll use a sponge to do that. Uh, and then we're going to lightly mist over a bit of this Weyerhaeuser Green. I think that's the right combination of colours. Um, it's certainly by my eye, that's kind of what it's looking like. Uh, and I'm sure that was a combination I used before, and it came out pretty decent looking. So, we'll crack on. Right, don't know how well we can see that on camera, but uh, we've got the got the coach green down, and I've managed to then get that dry and apply some patchy uh, dabs of masking fluid using a sponge. Now, that looks to be a bit dry, um, and I've got the Weyerhaeuser Green mixed up in the airbrush cup. You can see that or no? That's a bit rubbish. I think it's not very great. Ugh, doesn't matter, you'll see when it goes on. The, the key to painting Star Wars ships in general, but um, particularly Slave One, is layers. Good masking and layers that's the key to this whole build so let's get cracking with this so so all i'm doing here is just putting a small amount through the airbrush at a time and also what i'm also wanting to make sure i do is keep the airbrush back so when we're misting colours on we want to be keeping well back for the model I mean right now that's probably about I don't know 6 inches roughly give or take I mean I'm sure there's probably a joke in there somewhere but you know huh, less said the better about that anyway <laughs> um, so just keeping this back being careful not to catch overspray on the other areas that we've not masked off. So far we've been able to achieve that. And doing that we're just small amounts of paint released at a time. Right, I don't want to go any heavier than that. Right, what we'll do is get the airbrush onto that and we'll see how it looks. Right, I don't know how well you can see that, but there are two tones of green in there. Uh, you can just see a, a mottled pattern with a darker, more drab colour underneath the more vibrant, kind of foresty green, if you like. Um, and we've also got the chips on there as well. This side I don't have the reference images for, so I had to go a wee bit creative. Um, but effectively mirroring the same patterns, you know, the same sort of idea. Chips along the, the arch here, 
few here and there and some along this panel line here just keep replicating what you would see on the skirt and again we've managed to recreate that mottling colour hopefully you, the camera's picking that up um, I had a couple of wee issues with paint leakage here and there as you can see that's no major concern that can get neatened up with a wee brush um, again the stripe in here part of the markings of the ship and here um, again there's a bit more leakage and stuff but again that's that's not it's not a big drama i am very very happy with how that is turning out so far um like i say if anybody's seen shrek uh, ogres are made up of layers much like star wars starships made up of layers that's how the that's how the weather and the paint jobs go down um as you're starting to see it's building up uh the next part of the build once i've neatened up these wee Bits of overspray um, will be to paint the main part of the fuselage uh, and we'll be doing that with a gorgeous colour called 1975 light green that's away over the corner, I'll get it in a minute uh, you'll see it once I start doing it um, what we'll have to do let's swing that around is apply a whole host of chipping medium across across here um, and have it mottled all, all around the, this, I don't know what you would call this part of the ship, this sort of tail, maybe, I don't know, anyway, uh, and again on the other side as well, you'll see it in the reference pictures, um, so that's, that, that's going to be the next stage, um, I'll also have to mask off quite a sizable panel at the front here um, there is a panel that matches the shoulder colours uh, just on this section here and that will also get masked off when we come to do the next section um, is there anything else to say at this point? I don't really think so quite happy with that so far so stay tuned to see how this build progresses So we're back at a point now where we have got uh, the, pretty much the entire ship masked off. I know this probably seems like a ridiculous amount of masking. It does take a wee bit of time and patience. Uh, however, it's absolutely worth doing just purely to save the work that you've already done. I really don't want to have to start cleaning bits up, masking things off more, uh, and re redoing bits that I'd done previously. Now, where, where we're at, or what we're about to do, if you just want to have a wee look at this, now this isn't the original filming miniature, this is a studio scale model that was painted by John Simmons. Uh, very beautifully, the case that I had painted by John Simmons. So, the bit that we're looking to do is, this. see this light green section here, and all along, round, around the front here, right down the tail. Now you'll notice obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of grey, a lot of chipped areas where the paint is, is came away. Uh we're just going back to the, the usual masking fluid and a wee sponge. Uh we can also utilise our little rubber tip brushes as well, or silicone or whatever it is, uh to also apply uh, at certain areas. So we're just going to work away dabbing that on to rough, roughly replicate the pattern that's already down here. Uh, I've also got the original film and miniature images up there as well, uh, just for reference. Uh, I've got this central part here, this this dark section here. That's all mashed off. That will remain grey just now. Uh, and once we've done this, we'll remask and work on that bit separately. Uh, so just as as I said, time and time again, layers bit by bit, time and patience, lots of masking tape, and uh, we'll get there.
So that was the process sped up for you there, uh, laying down the masking fluid and then of course the green paint. The particular colour used is this, is this one here, I don't know where you can see that. Poor lighting here. Uh, 1975 light green. It looks much lighter on the original miniature because, as I said to you before, the colours are misted back and we will get to that stage. Uh, but first we've actually got to get the colours down and what we'll do now is we'll just we'll unmask uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing but you'll get an idea what I mean just in a second once we start to remove some of this tape and masking the fluid, we'll just start in this corner here the paint's had a wee chance to dry off now this is the area that we're going to be doing further work on so I'm not going to be too fussed about any paint underneath you'll see that we start to remove some of this masking fluid and we're left with all the chips and the, the scrapes that we're looking for that gives us this very vintage look So things are starting to come together. I'll uh, stop this now and I'll continue on with cleaning it up and then we'll move on to the next stage and you'll see when we move on to the next part of the video how the overall chipping effect has turned out. Right, I just actually started filming doing what I was doing there uh, and realised it was all completely out of focus. Uh, very quickly, uh, just to recap what I just said previously. All the chipping fluid, uh, chipping fluid, the uh, masking fluid has been removed to reveal all the chips. Uh, we've now got a very worn looking slave one and what we're now starting to do is apply a wash into the wells here. Uh, effectively what the wash is, is dark, dark grey mixed up very thinly, uh, just where you're normally brushed in it. And then we just flood in the paint into areas that we blow about. And doing that, what we do is we leave tight marks and pulls of pigment in different areas, it dries off, and then we end up with what looks like grime and dirt, uh, grease and all that kind of stuff all built up into recesses and, and, and some of the surfaces end up with tide marks and we've got or, or we're left with uh, gradients of colour and just leaves that effect of dirt and grime etc but that's that's the whole point of that this, I believe this is how ILM used to apply washes to to models normally when people are building models they would use washes like this this is one of Vallejo's model washes and it can be used for streaking and uh, darkening recesses and creating shaded areas etc. Uh, it was not really something that was done in the ILM studios. What you have to bear in mind is this style of painting was uh, it was designed for on camera. It wasn't designed for somebody actually looking at a model on a shelf or in a cabinet and appreciating it that way. It was very functional. It was as long as it looked good on camera. If you looked at a lot of the, or if you look at a lot of the, the film miniatures up close, there's overspray here and there. There's paint runs and different different things. It, it bits. It all adds to the overall effect of the model, uh, and and looks great on camera, but essentially they were they were painted fairly quickly by comparison of other models. You know, people might take a couple of months to paint a a tank or a battleship or an aircraft or whatever. These models had to be produced fairly quickly, so they were built uh, and then they were painted in the shop. And over time, you know, the guys were getting better at it, quicker at it, but, you know, the technique remained the same. Uh, and it was all very much for looking the part on camera, not necessarily up close. So it's a slight, that's why it's a slightly different style. It's why we don't go in with all these panel line washes, etc. Uh, and it, that's really what we're, we're trying to achieve here. So I'm going to continue that wash doing the, the struts of the, the wings here. I just get that blown a bit. In fact, I'm going to turn my brush to a wee bit. It's a wee bit high. Ideally, you want to be shooting the air out between 15 and 20 psi. I think I 
guess these also needs to be watered down a wee bit more as well. Just add a wee bit more thinner in there. As I say, we don't want... Yeah, that's a bit better. So there we go, we're starting to get that more about the... And then we'll just blow that into different areas. Leaving the effect of dirt, grime, oil, grease, etc. So, what I'll do is I'll continue on with this. And uh, you can have a look at that once it's finished. This is me starting the weather process now. I've still got the other side of the model to do. I've done some work to the other side if you remember back to the other video but it's very much still uh, early stages and untouched so what I'll do is I'll crack on with some of the weather here and uh, get this thing on the go alrighty, see you in a minute right, hopefully you can have a, a look and see what I mean with the tide marks and the the grime and stuff starting to form up on the wings uh, the wings aren't actually too heavily stained over the sort of flatter surfaces it's really just in some of the some of the gubbins some of the, the kind of mechanical parts and stuff so I'm quite content with that level of weathering at the minute uh, I may add a bit more in a wee while but really what I want to do tonight before I finish up is at least add the first layer of misting and uh, the colour we use for this is this really nice warm grey called dark green. The misting is a technique that some people may be aware of it's a fairly new one to me since sort of discovering this, this style of painting we want to be having our sorry I'm just going to have to move my light out the road here to get my airbrush in the, what we want is an airbrush a good good foot and a half anyway away from the actual model and it is literally as it says on the tin it's misting over it we're putting a mist of paint in the general vicinity of the model and what happens there is the small particles the droplets start to land on the miniature and it creates like a build up of well grime you know that's that's the colour that's what it's called it's just it simulates dust uh, and faded paint and that kind of stuff it just gives a sort of weathered look it starts to lighten the paint as well uh, and it does not as stark in your face as it's looking right now right now look at this through the camera that colour and that colour you could effectively say it's the same uh, that is based on the lighting and stuff that I've done well, I've got my light etc but that, that's kind of what that looks like these colours do tend to change and develop depending on what lighting's on them uh, but it's all a perception thing and but that will start to lighten up as we start to apply also what I should probably note I've also done is I've added a few blobs with a sponge of the masking fluid just to some of the grey parts because when I looked at the reference uh, photographs there was actually some lighter spots of the original grey colour and then you can see where it's been in sort of dulled with the, the misting and the grime and again it's just to add another mottled effect and a mottled layer to the, the paint now this misting is done over the whole ship and we just do it a wee bit at a time the paint itself is actually mixed up at a quite an ordinary ratio you can make it a bit thinner if you want but what you don't want is the paint actually starting to bead you really want it to, to lie quite level on the model so you don't really want it to form water droplets and you end up with tide marks and stuff like that so ready just starting to lighten things up a wee bit. Now there I've run out of paint already. 
It was actually going to mix up a wee batch of a cup here. Right, we went over that, misted it, misted it, misted it, and then misted it again. You can see, if you look close enough, where I've had the chipping fluid, and that's the original colour. Uh, you can also see the original green and how it's now lightened up there as well. So I've just left that. Or I may actually just put a wee bit of the Death Star surface grey because it is actually quite eye catching and I'm not really keen on that there. So I might just neat that up with a brush. There's a wee bit there as well. But that's, I'll pick that up. But you can see how it's really lightened up that green. Oh. We've got areas where I went a wee bit closer and then came back out again just to add a wee bit more intensity to the, the grime uh, and lighten up parts uh, and I've got more bottling around this side as well I'm really pleased with how this is starting to turn out it really looks starting to look dusty uh, probably looks slightly more dustier and slightly more warmer in that, you know, natural light rather than through the camera as, the, as you're seeing just now but actually on the camera it looks in my opinion, pretty pretty decent. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this, so please uh, stick some below and let me know what you think uh, about this technique. If you like to ask any questions about it, uh, me personally, I absolutely love it. It really brings the model together. It gives it that grimy, used sort of lived in world look that uh, George Lucas created. When he was doing Star Wars. Anyway, I'll have to go back over here. These parts here with a bit more of the the dark grime, and I've got some other uh, weather to do with that'll be coming up next. So I've decided this was going to be the last section of this video. Uh, since the last section, what you'll notice I've done is I've added the final parts of the weathering. So. I've done some streaks with the airbrush, some just some subtle streaking into some of the panels and the the different uh, greeblies that's on the, the hull of the ship. Uh, so here, for example, we added a wee bit in there, got a wee streak going, we've got a nice subtle streak in here, places like here and there. Uh, this bit up here, we, you also used a wee bit of sponge, just with some black paint on it, just to lightly dab on there. There was some sort of chip effects on there. Uh, it's on the, or similar to what's on the, the reference photographs. Again, some subtle streaking for some of the panels. Uh, basically, to, to, to achieve this, you would put a piece of tape over the panel, and then you would start your airbrush and just draw it down very lightly to create these nice subtle streaks of oil grind up whatever you want to whatever you want to imagine it is uh, again some of the, the sort of striped sort of vented areas sort of vents or panels of these these areas here we got some dark uh, dark wash in, in there as well the color used for all the streaking was uh, the dark lark again of the dark, dark grey. Uh, I can't remember how you how you pronounce that one. Um, again, got just a wee bit of sponge action just in here again. Just again, almost like little speckles of, of dark grime and oil and stuff like that. Um, the last thing I also done was I added a wee bit more misting into the skirt area using the colour foundation, uh, which is a sort of almost this kind of skin tone colour uh, and that adds a nice dusty uh, warm uh, coating to the to some of the, some of the paint here so particularly in this area here it looks pretty good like it's dark and dust and whatnot uh, and then we went back in with a cotton bud or as they would say in America a q-tip uh, with a wee bit of water on the end and just rolled it down there and just took some of that back off just to have this area here a bit darker again this is this bit is noticeable, noticeably darker in the reference pictures. So just to, to replicate that. Um, got a wee bit of the weather going on in here. Underneath there's not much happening under here, as you can see. Uh, 
I may go back into that, but then I don't want to go too heavy handed with that bit in there because that's really a part of the ship that's not particularly exposed too much. Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. So, yeah, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. I'm going to wrap this video up now. What the other thing is, is I added this nice white stripe in here. This is a very crisp, standout stripe on the on the reference pictures. It's almost like it was added after everything was done. So, yeah, once I'd finished weathering that there, I went and masked that little bit off and just fired in some reefer white. And uh, that's turned out quite nice. So, yeah, that's, that's basically the top part of the ship finished. Uh, we'll crack on with the underside next as you can see that's been untouched really uh, so the next video in this and hopefully the final video in this series will focus on the belly and the underside of the ship and so listen if you've got this far thanks again for watching i really appreciate it um i really appreciate it. we're up to nearly something like 100 likes uh, we're like 90 98 likes or something no, subscribers so thanks to everybody for subscribing i really appreciate it um i'm just really happy that uh, there's 98 people out there in the world with, with a bit of interest as what i'm doing here um so hopefully i'm helping you guys out whether it's you know spurring you on to do something a bit different or you know showing you some slightly different terms of your technique or whatever Magic, um, if anybody's got anything else they want to share with me, I'd happily uh, listen to what you've got to say. Uh, I would appreciate any sort of hints or tips or help, or any guidance or anything there. Uh, I just like the idea of uh, everybody sharing their skills in the model world and everybody getting a chance to, to try something a bit different and learn from each other. Anyway, that's enough of me rattling on. I'll wrap up now and I'll see you all in a bit. Cheers, bye.